Good evening, and welcome to Outside of the Grid, a podcast by Brad Barfield and Donald Hensley, where we have extraordinary conversation with so-called ordinary people, people that you meet driving down the street or in the stores, but you don't know their backstory until you learn it here, way out here, Outside of the Grid. Welcome to the show. Hey, Tom, Tom, can you hear me? Yeah. What's up? Oh, man. We're just calling to talk. I mean, you know, there's so many things that's going on right now. You know, you shared some, uh, some stuff with us, some information with us in the last couple of days. And, man, I just wanted to kind of follow back up on a conversation with you. Well, so far, so good, man. Uh, I just got home. I just got back from the liquor store. A friend of mine stopped by and he's like I'm going to the beer store you want to go and I did wish I had some well I had just got back from the liquor store when he showed up and I'm like you know why not I'll go right back <laughs> so it was a double liquor store day which is kind of good yeah well yeah I mean did, I guess did, did you buy the second time as well <laughs> I sure did. I doubled up. I That's doubled what I down. You're I like, hell, I, I ain't going to waste another trip to the dang liquor store. I'll buy it tomorrow, <laughs> too. <laughs> yeah. All he's saying is, is that parties at Tommy's house tomorrow. I got vodka and uh, whiskey. and. Uh, I and, think he's uh, saying the parties at his, his house tonight. tonight. <laughs> hey, party, party all the time. Party. Hey, did Every we get day. did we get Eddie Murphy on the line here or what? I don't know. <laughs> Want to rock and roll all night? Oh, we're Party every day. I think now we're might have had a drink. I think so. Hey, ain't nothing wrong with that shit, man. Now what it needs to do is take the booth all together. We'd be smoking, doing some other stuff and some drinks. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can pretend. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, virtual uh, virtual parties. Virtual man, parties. I'm partying right now. Mm-hmm. With my Partake. glass of water. Partaking. Hey, they, well, there you go. So there's our party. I mean, hey, I would love to have a beer right now to, to go along. I just don't happen to have one. And I ain't going to go to the damn liquor store. I just ain't going to do it. <laughs> I wish I had one, too. About three of them, I'd probably be so damn drunk. I'd be stumbling home. You know what I'm saying? Well, well, you, well, you know, I actually enjoyed the fact when I got when I got to that point where I could actually buy a six-pack and it lasts three days. To, you know, just two beer in the evenings. And, man, yeah. I'm ready to go to bed. I'm good. <laughs> you know, and I don't even do that all the time. But, you know, yeah. there was a while after I, I quit drinking, of course, you know, since back in January completely, other than, yeah, you know, a beer every now and then. That's for a little, you know, hey, I did that, and it was great. <laughs> you know? yeah. I just can't do it all the time. But anyway, you know, but, yeah, two, like, two beers, is like, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> Well, you know, a lot of those beers these days, man. Tommy, Tommy well, he's drinking vodka. Do you drink beer, Tommy, or no? Uh, yeah, I, I'm drinking. Uh, I, I drank a Dos Equis earlier. The green or the amber? The green, yeah. That's, that's the best one, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The I'm most interesting, man. I've had, I started off with a margarita or two, and then I had a, uh, what was that, uh, uh, I, 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 I had a Dos Equis and now and then I had a White Claw so I'm kind of that's why he answered tonight Brad uh, <laughs> that White Claw gets you is what I hear isn't it yeah. oh, I, I, it white claw. What do you think? I don't think it's just a White Claw I've been mixing it up but what is a White um, Claw though I don't know is that the it's crazy a seltzer thing? it's a seltzer 
you take the seltzer water just like it's water and seltzer and the flavor in which is like blackberry and it's it's like a beer worth a, got a shot of booze in there just like five percent so you take that seltzer water yeah, so here's the funny thing is, is they only started calling it that because you, Brad, you know what a seltzer water is, right? I mean, like soda water. Yeah, it's soda yeah. water. But yeah. you know, they they quit calling it seltzer water from back. And you remember back in the old cartoons where they had the people with a little glass thing, the bubbles, and they'd shake it and they'd yeah. squirt it at the people. Well, you know that was a <laughs> that, that was that. Well, then they quit calling it that. And started calling it soda water. Well, now they're back to calling it that. <laughs> you know, but it's still soda water <laughs> with yeah. some. Uh, uh, well, it's got to be a um, what do they call it a fermented drink. It can't be like a hard liquor. Uh, so it's kind of that's why they're, they're listed as a as a wine product, like a like a wine cooler and stuff. I tell you, for me, if I'm gonna have any kind of alcohol, I, I do like a good beer. Now I'm talking about like a Guinness, a good one. Out. A good extra stout, a drought. Yeah. And some IPAs, man. There's a lot of IPAs out there. I'm, I'm telling you right now, Corona to me, people, some people call it a junk beer, but I love Corona, Corona. man. If they're cold, whew. Coronas. Uh, I mean, Heinies are really good cold, you know. Yeah, but ooh, I mean, I and love I me think, good Coronas. I think like the Heineken kind of tastes like Budweiser Platinum to me. It has that really weird, you know. I mean, it has what. that better taste to it. Well, see, it's it, it's one of them. I, again, it's like you're talking about. You've got a bunch of craft beer that you can buy from small markets, and and you know, me and Brad, you know, had talked about love going to liquor stores, you know, because I personally like a good whiskey and coke or just you know that kind of thing. But I do like a beer, and I go, I like going to these liquor stores to look at just all the novelty bottles and stuff you can get, you know, all the different kinds of alcohol. But a lot of it, I also like going to those craft areas where. You know, it's limited area beer. You know, it's only kind of area, you know, limited to this area of the United States and stuff. So as I traveled, I found those. And, man, those are cool. Some of them are really good. Right on. And, you know, of course, you know, in, in other places, larger areas, and even Little Rock, and uh, I see them all over in, in larger cities like Boulder and here and there. You know, there's there's a great tradition of making beer all across the, I mean from what I read you know there's a time in Europe that we couldn't even drink the water that everybody drank beer all the time so I mean there's a huge history of beer with with most people with most human beings so you know it's just uh, there's, it's a lot of it out there and of course alcohol is a lot of varied drinks you know another one I like in addition to beer is like a good bourbon and of course, you know, my favorite was always Jim Beam or some of their related products, you know, like the Knob Creek, man, they have, that, that stuff was just so smooth. But you, you can't drink much of it or you've been laid on the ground. Okay, so I've been thinking about the word party and partay and partake. I mean, there's got to be a, got to be a connection there. I think party is a, Abbreviated form of partake. I'm not going to argue with you. Sounds good to me. Yeah, probably way back in them uh, Greek days when they did all the buggery and did all that <laughs> stuff they did in the Greece times. And then, of course, you know, all the stuff with the Romans. Don't forget about the vomitorium and all the weird crap they had going on. So, yeah, party to partake. I. I Without looking up to find a reference, you're probably right. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just guessing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just, just kind of one of those sitting there, one of those kind of sitting there and you, talking uh, about it. <laughs> you, you, you put out a word, buggery. I mean, why is it called that? I mean, has it got something to do with bugs? I don't know, since that's a, uh, you know, predominantly. I bet it does. Uh, I bet it does. And it could be. I mean, it could be with bed bugs or something. Again, that's one of them, you know, uh, English <laughs> terms. I'm sitting you outside know. right now with bugs crawling all over me, you know. But, uh, you're you know, buggery. I'm buggery. You're being sure, buggery. Man. You're well, being buggery right now. Well, don't hey, be man. telling nobody in uh, England and London and over there that you like yeah. being buggered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they may do something <laughs> unpleasant. Go, I love being buggered. <laughs> yeah. Well, come on, mate. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I got a special surprise for you, buddy. That's right. I got a poison wand for you. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, now speaking of a poison, of not a poison wand, but a wand. <laughs> you know, and uh, attached to a crane and a video that we all watch together, or some of us watch. <coughs> man, that was some pretty spectacular stuff, man. I started, that you know, was, I'm talking about, can you that hear was me? The, the biggest rocket ever, ever, ever made for, for like an hour. Dude, that was the most horrible segue I've ever heard in my life, Brad. That was horrible, man. Hey, <laughs> hey, you know, as a, as a guy that's given OSHA training, I could imagine, because, you know, every crane driver, they have to watch the big blue clout. I would yeah. imagine that that poor guy was, tr- yeah, but yeah, I, I agree, you know. <laughs> But I'm, I had to segue somewhere or the other because we were going on a dangerous path. Oh, no, 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 no. I was just, believe me, I had already figured we were going to kind of, you know, nip that little piece at the end. I was uh, just, just <laughs> jump subjects. I, I heard <laughs> anal sex coming up quick, okay? Damn. I had to pull the plug. I had to pull the butt plug on that. Oh, yeah, no, I got I had already planned to. I said, you know, after that last comment and the buggery, yeah, we'll be cutting that little piece out. <laughs> Oh, now I've got to say, because I agree, no more editing. Okay, so now I would I would just go, well, Tommy, tell us about the stuff with SpaceX and let him take off from there. We go from buggery to SpaceX? Yep. <laughs> just, just think about the stress that crane driver had, man. Just think about that, though, man. That's some, you know, uh, I always I, admire people. It's just the load, man. It's just the load. How many million uh, dollars is how many million dollar load was to that black thing? That well, it was all connected at one point, so he he kind of had his hands on probably a billion dollars there. Yeah, but I mean, you know, you you got to think about. I mean, the, all of this stuff. You know, you watch engineering catastrophes. You know, designs laid out, plans made, cranes put in special places, loads balanced, counterbalanced. All of it's done, and all it takes is one guy to miss a decimal spot somewhere. I mean, right. it can happen. So, I mean, and you have the wind, buddy. Well, yeah, well, and then you've got the wind and all kinds of, you know, so there's a lot of stuff. So, hey, from a standpoint of just with a lot on the line as, you know, hey, the, the main coordinator, and then you take that guy who is coordinating, all right, now you're the main crane guy. Well, now he's got his butt on the line. It's like, woo, man, yeah, the stress is horrible. <laughs> you know? I, I he, or not. he had a lot of money on there. But he had yeah. the most, the second most powerful crane in the world at his mm-hmm. hand. Yeah. Like, number two most powerful crane on the planet at his, at his command. So the load wasn't anywhere near overwhelming the crane yeah he had to be really precise with, with his movements i'm not belittling the man at all because it was yeah it's a big job but he had a really good tool at his disposal hey let me ask you a question now how, how tall was that thing completed at it whenever it's ready it's to close float? to 400 feet yeah yeah it's close to 400 feet. You've got the bottom part, which is the booster, which is taller than the spaceship. Hey, let me just say this about that crane operator. Just, just as, as, and we're going to come right back to this. But about, I don't know, 20 years ago, I got I was working with a concrete crew. And it may have been in 2011. So about 10 years ago. I, was, I saw people pour concrete, and the guy that was pouring concrete from the truck drove it with a remote control. The truck oh, and the pour. That's cool. You know. Hey, that's, that's cool. So, so what I'm trying to say is that, that that thing, you know, it's like when they're flying those drones. That I, I guess that guy was on site, but he doesn't even have to be. Probably, like I said, with the technology you're talking about, you know. This is SpaceX. I mean, Jesus, the biggest rocket ship ever. And you, let me say this, and you let you talk for a second, but there was a graphic that we discussed, and it showed a picture of this, of this, what's it called, the space starship? Starship. And it showed how big it was versus the, like, the, the space shuttles that we knew, like Challenger that blew up in 86. 
and that thing was probably three times as big as that thing in terms of height at least yeah it's a it's it's like going from uh it's like going from your old model a cars straight to a uh a luxury rv you know as, as far as complexity and size it's it's like going from like the there were three people at a time went to the moon and they were cramped i mean in a in a in a car station wagon is the max space they had and this is like an rv putting a luxury yacht into space with provisions for a extended voyage it's it's going from paddling around the pond in your backyard to crossing the Atlantic, and, uh, you know. To... Hello? Yeah, we're here. Okay. Yeah, but I was just listening, yeah, I was listening to you talk, uh, you know, and you're right. I mean, you're looking at a big, um, you know, a big jump, but, I mean, look at the amount of technology that, you know, went from the 70s to the 80s. I mean, I saw the graphic, I, uh, one of the, I think, in our little chat showing the height of the, you know, the the space shuttle, the Saturn V, all the way up, you know. So, yeah, as technology progresses. And, uh, yeah, it is going from the size of a Volkswagen to the size of an RB, you know. But, I mean, you know, you got to think, you know, you're talking about the right tool for the job going back to the crane thing, but it still relates to the Starship as well. Uh, you're talking about having the right tool, and you're right. You can have the right tool, and if the Starship's the right tool, it's still been put together by someone else, by man, and man is fallible. So having the right tool don't mean it's going to do the job, you know, which was something with the crane thing being stressed out. You know, the number two crane in the world, well, they had to move it there and put it together. Well, they didn't put it together right. The tool was right. <laughs> But it wasn't put together right. Well, the Starship's the right, same thing. You're right. We got to have a tool big enough to get us out there, an extended voyage. You got to think about the, you know, the sanity of the crew on that amount of time and confinement with the same people. You know, you don't want to have the space madness as they fit on all the sci-fi things. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you do got a lot of stuff. All these parts have got to come together. The complexity of this project is mind-boggling and it's you know it's a very big project yeah i mean you know but it's more than just it's a very big project i mean that, that's what uh, i'm afraid a lot of people get from because we don't take the time to go you're not just thinking about it's, it's a big project just look at all the things that had to come together to make this happen in all the fields the development of the fuel and just you know it is a huge man made man time changing project is what over, it can be it's over 50 it can years be. old it can it's be over 50 years old hey i'm looking here at this graphic we looked at and the starship that we're talking about by spacex tommy mentioned it carries a huge payload it carries 100,000 kilograms 100 tons yeah and then the space shuttle as a comparison carries 29,000 so it's at least it's three times more than what that could carry, and and that and then the, look like the rocket. Uh, I can see how this thing is built now, and I see the wings and stuff that Don was talking about earlier on this thing. So it is. So it's just like a space shuttle, but instead of having the space shuttle look like it looks like it has three different boosters, like that shoots them off at different times. But the this one looks like it just has one huge launcher at the bottom of it. That okay. Oh, right. Well, the shuttle was on the side of its booster. The the starship is sitting on top of its booster, and that was a major design flaw of the shuttle. It caused it to crash because the ice fell off the booster and hit the shuttle. Well, if it, the shuttle is on top, it wouldn't have done that. So they they've learned from past engineering mistakes and of yeah. course they're learning as they go and the, the key to 
to it all is to just fly it a lot. I mean, yeah, it's going to fail. And you want to fly it a million times so you figure out how it's going to randomly fail before you even put a person on it. I mean, we fly airlines every day, and there's no... There's no escape tower on those. It either works or it doesn't. Yeah, and, and most of the time they do work because of the the, 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 the regulations in the FAA. And I can't even imagine what it is. These well, guys. They, they, they fly them a lot, and they you have to fix yeah fix any problems or design flaws, and that's exactly what they're doing there. So now is is you know we've watched. Forever, we've seen the United States of America through NASA do this, and now we're seeing some dude that's our age uh, doing it. Right. And using their, all this stuff. Now, how in the hell does that do that? There's, that's the part that's kind of confusing to me is shit putting all. This guy must be brilliant, is all I'm going to say, because everybody gives him money to do whatever the hell he wants to do. I mean, it's just unbelievable. No, they pay, they're paying him for services delivered. Yeah, he, I mean, there the money isn't given to him. It's he's selling products. Well, I mean, but what, but what I think Brad's referring to is you know the rise of Elon Musk. I mean, you know, if you oh. know, you know, a little bit of his history. You know, he started young and he got dedicated into doing something, and he sold that. You know, and he built on and he added. I mean, he had drive to do what yeah. he wanted to do. Yeah. And, and what he did was, of course, he got to the point that people started believing this man can actually do what he's saying he can do. And that's when people started giving him money to invest in the SpaceX yeah. and stuff to do it. And, you know, and, and they he, he got nine of them and he did like Tommy was saying. He, they flew them and they crashed them. All right, let's make adjustments. We'll fly another one. And you know they were down to the last one or two, and you know until they got it close enough that they could actually build on top of it. Then somebody would give them more money to yeah. develop it even further. Now, he everybody is he yeah. He did earn it. That's the thing yeah. is people. He had to get to the point that people believed in him to give him the money to invest in him. And to make the company what it is. Now, I know Tommy, or I believe Tommy, was trying to say, nowadays, yeah, it's they're making money hand over fist because now it's more of a company rather than the the venture that, that it used to be, you know. So, yeah, now yeah. the history of him getting there, man, is super interesting because the stuff I read was just, he was just driven. He just yeah. made his mind up and didn't let nothing stop him. And, he was I mean, in the right places at the right times, the right mind. Think about this. Think about this, man. This is just to get the first thing done. I mean, he, he's not like trying to build like bags of marshmallows here, man. He's building billion-dollar machines and putting people in them and blasting them into space. You know, so that's a that's pretty risky business for a person. That's kind of what I was insinuating a little bit ago. I mean, a government can do it but man whenever what i was talking about is is the money the operating capital the insurance a lot of people believe in what this guy can accomplish and you know and of course it's it's what i'm seeing of it and what you guys talk about with him it's totally amazing now um another thing that we talked about was i mean just the number of articles that we see coming out every day about him I mean, if you just scroll through our list, our little chat window where we talk about such things, it's like every day the the people are talking about this guy. I mean, it's, I, I don't, I don't even get. I mean, I, like I said, I hadn't even heard of him until just in the last few years. Last thing I knew, I've been so busy doing other things, but the last thing I knew, I think maybe even a decade ago, right now, there was the last. Uh, the actual last flight of the space shuttle fleet, I think it was in 2011. So, I mean, in 10 years, this guy has went from relative obscurity to us and everybody in the world talk about him, talking about him all of the time. Well, well he, he has I, a vision. Yeah, 
go, I mean, that's what going to say. Tommy can tell you a little more about the more, the, uh, the, what, what did they used to call I think they actually called it the X Prize, didn't they, Tommy? Uh, that was a prize. I don't know if Elon had much to do with that. No, no, I, I meant he got started trying to win that prize, and I think the, um, you know, the prize time limit expired, and you know, but he kept working on the stuff because he had come so close to doing it. And that's what I was talking about. That t- area. I thought you, I, I thought you had been talking about it the other day. I'm, I'm sorry, maybe I'm thinking about somebody else. That's. I don't think that's Elon. Elon wanted to buy a rocket from Russia, a space rocket from Russia, and they, 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 they. they they didn't realize who they were talking to and they blew him off and he's like well i'll just make my own rocket and he did well I and mean, that's true i mean but i'm still talking about it got started by originally after the space shuttle thing and decided to retire the space shuttle and because of the cost expense blue tape bureaucracy regulations epa crap da, 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 you know it was hard for NASA and them to try to get to the space. So this group came up with, I think, something called the X Prize. And what it was, they were trying to get private corporations to start getting into a race to get to space. And this prize was $10 million. And a whole bunch of people done, I mean, there's several documentaries on it. And Elon was one of the groups that was working on that prize. Nobody won the prize in the end. Now, Yes, the thing with Russia you're talking about, that was where he was working to try to win that prize. Well, you're, trying to get the you're, engine you're, and where the, the Raptor is. Hit. No, you're confused. I, mean, um, well, I, I could be. I mean, somebody, that's what I was asking you somebody, to tell me. Yeah, somebody did win the X Prize, and it wasn't Elon. And No, no, no. I know Elon did not win it. But I it know was that. Won. It was won. Okay. <laughs> Um, I want to say Burt Rutan had something to do with that. That was the uh, that was the feather design that that Richard Branson is now using. He like bought the uh, bought the concept of the feathered reentry, where the, the tail fins kind of fold up and allow the sh- spacecraft to just fall. It's just going to fall. Straight, right. you know, but that's uh, that's totally different from from Elon Musk. I don't think he was a cool, I don't think he was participating in the X Prize. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. He didn't have anything to compete with at the time. No, there were several companies that were all competing. I mean, this, this ain't like one of those things you had to walk up there and go, "Here you go, I am officially entering my name." It, it right. wasn't nothing like that. It was just the first company, private individual that can get to get to orbit and return. That's right. what it was for. Right, well, right. whatever. The, okay. Well, whatever the details are, I'm just saying uh, hey, I, that I is when happen. that race started. Hey, I got a Google in front of me here. I put was Elon Musk in it game, and it says uh, Elon Musk worked in video games. Now, now what did I? Not X Games. X I think it's called the X Prize. X Prize. Oh, okay. Well, I don't. I had, I didn't even know what y'all talking about. I don't. I hadn't had the TV since 2010. Well, that's why you asked the question about Elon, and you yeah, want to know some of the backstory. And I'm trying to say is oh, it God, started with the is. X Prize. Here's the answer. <laughs> listen. Here, here, here it is right here. He, Listen, the richest incentive prize in history is now fixed up the grabs. The $100 million carbon removal X Prize is funded by SpaceX and Tesla Chief Elon Musk and his foundation. That was now, hold on. That is, yeah, that's this year. This would be X-Prize, uh, private individual race to space. Maybe. maybe he, I'm trying to find it. That, that was the top one. Yeah. I think he's 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 thinking. Uh, let's find it, man. We got Google. Well, uh, well that's you know. fine. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> There's an Enterprise Foundation bio. He has that. But I mean, just because we don't want to be wrong. I mean, I don't want to. No. I don't. I mean, not. It was the Ansari A A N S A R Ansari X Prize. 
Uh, and Ansari was the name of the guy that kind of put the shit together. I don't know. I don't know enough about it. I've not researched Elon Musk. I don't. I mean, I've done a cursory read of his uh, Wikipedia page. I've not read any de- deeper than that. I saw him on Joe Rogan smoking a marijuana cigarette. You know, being funny, and but being very smart and very weird about the digging holes in the ground. You know. Well, I mean, the, the whole thing was again. All of the big race that we're seeing, you want to know why people were talking about Elon. All right, well, Elon is just the one that got there first again. They all started. The whole talk about this race with the billionaires, us going to Mars and the moon, started with this prize that they were just offering to private individuals. And there's like 10 people, 10 major players that started this new space race with these billionaires. I don't know who actually won that first prize. I just remember there was going to be a prize, and a lot of these people started there with this new race. I'm like you. I don't know a lot of the details. I just kind of know, well, that's kind of where he got started and where he's at. And this is why everybody's talking about it now is they kind of got there. Well, this doesn't mention it about, about that, so we have to come back, leave this on the table, come back. But he does fund it now, and on his bio, it doesn't mention it. He does mention it, some other things, but let's let's just come back to come back to it later. Well, yeah. Now the new X Prize is is the one by Elon. Now I know that one's absolutely true. The carbon emission yeah. that is the new X Prize. Yeah. Funded by Elon and Tesla and this and this. You know, I've got I've got something to say about that. What's that? Uh, the X, the, the, I remember now, uh, the new X Prize is not for space exploration. It's to reduce carbon emissions on Earth. Right, yeah, that's the new X Prize that Elon... That was the prize, the, the, the reward for that. And I actually threw an idea to SpaceX, like I've thrown so many. Tell us and about it. Tell us about it. I, I work with carbon rich nutrients every day and all septic tanks are black and that's carbon and that's because we turn we 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 pull the nutrients out of our food and what's left is what it's made out of is that's carbon and it's black so yeah. i recommended to that our current sewer systems Tons and tons and tons of carbon go through every day. Just, just pull it out of that. Duh. Yeah, but I mean, you know, the infrastructure would have to be built to collect it. It's already there. Yeah, but I mean, that means you still got to go and pump it, don't you? No, I'm talking about city sewer systems. It's all the same shit. Well, okay, I mean, if you're, if you're talking about city, I, okay, you're talking about it funneling down through there. I'm talking well, about existing sewer systems are, yeah. they're rivers of carbon. Well, uh, yeah, but I mean, you know, carbon is the most common substance on Earth. I mean, they, there's probably no feasibility to try to pull it out of poop. That is the X Prize. No, 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 it is to remove uh, carbon emissions. It, it's the greenhouse gases, the, the carbon emissions, to be able to sustainably reduce carbon emissions and not reduce All right. carbon. Well, when you take a shit, that's a carbon emission. Well, but that's it. I don't know if that's the poop doing that as much as it's the methane gas. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, explain what is, now, now, I want to know. Now, you may be serious with this part of it, but about how it actually reduces. I mean, I mean, you okay. know, I've heard, I've heard people say, you know, put a, you know, a vacuum system on a cow to catch its farts so it doesn't methane gas the, uh, you know. That is a carbon emission. It, yeah, but it's the breakdown of the organic matter and stuff. Yeah, I mean, they actually, that- you know, on farms and stuff like out in Montana, they they collect the the pig shit and stuff and put it in a silo and digest it to produce methane for them to burn in their generators on the farms. Yeah. Well, 
I, I misunderstood the goal of the carbon re- reduction situation. Right. Then yeah. I, I mean, I, carbon is carbon is carbon. Yeah, yeah. It, it's the the, the carbon emissions, and you know they're they're talking about the burning of fossil fuels, you know, carbonized fuels and stuff. I mean, that's what the the whole thing is. It's just they're offering money to try to get people off the middle ground of climate change and trying to get off of uh, coal and, you know, petroleum products and trying to go more to solar and this and that. So his incentive is kind of like with the Tesla solar things, you know, and the batteries and junk. Hey, somebody else worked on this just as hard as we are. And so he said, I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. Now, that's just a little article I read. I don't know if all of that is true, but that's kind of the gist of what I'm understanding is why he did it. Okay, I got, I got, I got, I got a, a quick little story, and then I want us to talk about whether it's already too late or not. But now, to to Tommy, there he's talking about the carbon. There was a company I came across up in North Arkansas, and they it was two brothers, and one of them they both excuse me not one of them but both of them inherited property up in Pennsylvania, and the property was covered with, um, uh, what they called carbon. They didn't call it coal because it wasn't quite coal. It was carbon. You know, it was a, a huge deposit of carbon. And, you know, so they tried to do several things with it. And finally, they came up with the idea. One of the, one of the brothers in Heber Springs was making barrels. But they decided that, that they would use the guy that made the brother that made barrels to put the, the carbon that had been treated into these barrel type things and set up the city as ways to clean the water. So they would get the carbon, they would treat it with certain ways, and they would put it inside of these huge barrels that were really like huge tanks. And they sold it to municipalities and they made money. In fact they made lots and lots and lots of money doing that. You know. So but like you said though, there that's a lot if you think about the human poop situation, I don't know what it is, but I'm guessing it's so many pounds per day that we should be utilizing for something. We're just shipping down these systems. So we, I mean, in, in the past, we helped, you know, fertilize. Yeah, well, yes. You have to be careful with human fertilizer because you can get a worm situation going on. North Korea yeah, has a bad a parasite. worm, parasite <laughs> worm situation. That used because to be the use, problem. They use human feces for raising crops. And, well, it's yeah. just... It's that sounds good. gross, though. That sounds well, gross. That used well, to be a problem back in the uh, the 80s and stuff uh, with lettuce out of Mexico. They were telling people don't eat it because, uh, you know, down in Mexico where all these fields are coming, these the people were, you know, pooping and stuff just in holes. And, of course, the water was going through it and that water and that feces was water in the plants and you people's getting parasites and they weren't washing it oh my lord yeah but 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 you think about that that's been a huge, huge problem forever just hearing about like a village the other day i read this book called life in the medieval village it was in the year 1000 and of course just like now they have huge huge sewage problems and people then would just throw it in the street and it was horrible you know so but anyway, that aside, that's the story and about the little company. And there's an the opportunity there if you can figure out what to do with it. As, car- as Tommy said, with carbon, I do like the idea. But again, yeah. you earn your yeah. money if you if you pump that stuff or if you or if you work on plumbing systems. I mean, a lot of people. You just mentioned that with lettuce with fecal on it. Now a lot of people probably won't eat lettuce if they hear this. You know? <laughs> but anyway, so without washing it really well, anyway. But now. You know, I heard the thing the other day that says that, that it doesn't really matter what we do at this point here. We've already gone past the point that we're already going to see huge change. In fact, we're already seeing huge change with the, the carbon that we already have in our, too much in our system. Um, I mean, so, but right now, it's just about slowing down enough to slow down whatever future other stuff may happen if we don't slow down so what do y'all think about that anyway we're all gonna die we're gonna use up all the resources we're gonna over consume and over farm and 
over for us and there's too many people and we're gonna eat ourselves out of the house and home and we're gonna fight over water and whatever just eat drink your beer and eat your hot dogs and what about your shit don't worry about it I mean it, it sounds to me like the the, uh, the billionaires are, are saying hell with it and going on somewhere else, somewhere else. Uh, they're like you people no, are crazy no they they bought their um, billion dollar bunkers and they're like well fuck you I got mine I don't think they'll be I, I don't think that there'll be many places they can hide. I mean, you know, I know there's folks that believe it, but I don't know if it's too late or not, but it sure looks like it's well on its way for dang sure. <laughs> I don't worry about it. We'll be fine. I mean, yeah, we're gonna be fine. well, we will or we won't. I mean, it's just that simple. I mean, if people you know, survive the, the last ice age. We can survive some bullshit. Oh, yeah, no, I'm not even really, you know, the, the climate change thing, I'm not worried about it being like an extinction type thing. Now, I would be more worried about it if it was due to, like, you know, large volcanic eruptions and ash clouds, because then you get the, you know, more global, the entire planet global winter, you know, uh, more than just the greenhouse effect. You know, the global warming thing could, you know, trigger the ice age type thing. And, we, you know, we're, we are seeing it. I mean, heck, I was, there was an article I was reading today, I don't know if I forwarded y'all or not, about uh, you know, tundra up in, you know, the northern parts of Siberia and Russia that's melting, you know, it's thawing out that, you know, hasn't been thawed out in so many thousands of years. And, you know, it's, and, you know, there, and there's like organisms and worms and stuff in there that they've been dormant in there for all that time, you know, and oh, they've wow. found lots of, lots of species that they haven't seen and stuff. Well, I mean, hell, some of them could have bugs or viruses and crap that we've never got. You know, so there's your issue, you know, I believe with global warming is, you know, there's going to be catastrophes. You're going to have small pockets of survivors. I just don't think it's going to be a, a wipeout, you know, but. I don't think it's, it'll be fun. I don't know about fun. <laughs> your definition of fun and my definition of fun are way different. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I mean, seriously, though, we, we, we could imagine this happening. But that that would have to be some. I mean, I, last year last year during 2020, I read several catastrophe books, including Stephen King's The Stand, which is a huge undertaking. It took me almost a month to, to listen to. Yeah, it. that's the big one. Yeah, but man, you know, reading it during that, I mean, you know, and then you know during the middle of that pandemic, you know, it, it kind of freaked me out, but also kind of gave me some balance too because I did see that humanity kind of survived huge things. It wasn't as big as it was and it was different and you know, people with different skills than you would have ever thought survived, you know what I'm saying, just according to to, to you know, just a, a fictional account of it. Mm -hmm. so, but it is kind of fascinating, but I'd be I'd be curious to know. I mean I, to me I can't even conceive of it happening. I I could conceive of people living I feel like I'm a survivor I feel like I could I don't feel like it's in my lifetime anything bad could happen like that, but maybe my way out there, four or five generations. It's happening right now. I'm talking about where it affects your life. Oh, come well, on. Well, man, I, I, well, has the last two years not affected your life in a major way? No. COVID. I mean, has the last two years of COVID not affected your life majorly? It made you oh, change? Man. It has. Yeah. yeah, well, see, there you go. You've had a but that's life not, change. That's, well, that's not, now, wait, that's there's not, another one. Here's another example of a life changing that's event. That's not comment. That's not comment, though. That's, oh, but but now it's, I got what you're saying, but it's not even close. No. That, you know. No, 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 but I mean, if you're talking about just, if you're not talking about but saying you're right. That. It is a change, though. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, and, and my, I just misunderstood what you meant. You meant you don't think we're going to see a huge change in our lifetime. And, uh, and I don't know. I guess it d depends on the degree of change you're talking about. I mean, I think we are seeing changes. I mean, look at the fires all over the world because of the droughts, you know, and this and that. And a lot of this is natural swings. 
our biggest thing is we're attributing to it. We're helping speed it up. You know, yeah. and because I was talking to a guy the other day, and that's you know I I said something about you know uh, he was talking about Biden him shutting down the oil line, and I was like, well, I mean you know this and this. I said you know electricity's good. We need to try to work on this, and and they're like, well, yeah, they're just all that BS about climate change because that stuff happens naturally and blah blah blah. And I said, yeah, no one disagrees that it. Well, I won't say no one, but most folks do not disagree that it happens naturally. But because of a lot of things Tommy listed about, you know, over farming, overpopulation, fossil fuels, carbon emissions, da, 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 you know, us pumping so much water out of the ground, sink up, you know, we're causing bigger changes than would normally happen over a time span. You know, and so, yeah, I mean, we're making it happen sooner, and I think we're making it happen faster than it would normally. Whereas if it would happen, say, every 5,000 years, we're making it happen at 2500 whereas if it would happen at 5000 and take a thousand years to happen we're gonna have to have it starting at 2500 and make it only take a hundred years to get as worse as it needs to be just because we've made such major changes that are not natural changes and there's and there's nine billion of it yes overpopulation well here's the good news a reduction in population will help the overall population well yeah i mean it will help the earth overall but it, i don't think it'll help the overall population it will help the, uh, <laughs> whoever's left will be better off as well yeah yeah and i i agree with that but now again hey this is the perfect segue into the balancing of nature you know climate change is the earth nature balancing Overpopulation due to too many people. COVID. I I know the argument of you know China did it and this. I I don't know if China did it. I don't know the evidence. I'm not going to take anybody's word for it. But I just you know. Anyway, but let's just say it was natural. Well, and it's adapting. We're already seeing these different variants. Well, I, okay. Well, if it is natural, like you know a lot of people claim, well, hell, that could be nature asserting it's we've got to have a population adjustment here it could be the same thing you know nature doesn't have a will that i know of do i nature is reactionary right that's what i'm saying is it's reacting to this is a field of covid if it is nature natural could be nature's reaction to overpopulation it's reacting like you're talking about yeah, hey, I'm not saying it absolutely is, but hey, it is a thought. Hey, look here. Here's something I know. Uh, here's, here's something I do know, and you all have to agree with me. If you don't, then you're wrong. But yeah. from from uh, from from something dead, something alive doesn't come. Am I right? Can a, can something dead have something that uh, you know? Can a can a earth that's dead people? Can a apple tree that's dead make apples? No, it can't. So our Earth is alive. I mean, it's an organism. I mean, you can't say that it's not because it is. It's it's it's, it's not the same kind of organism we are. And I could imagine that you know, like our body, you know, inside of it is a bunch of stuff and like you know stuff that we've learned about in the past year with COVID. Whenever there's too much of something there that's making me sick, it attacks it. And you know, I could see that happen. I mean, it's a system. It's a, it's it's an organic system. And if something's doing wrong, if there's an ant biting you, you're gonna kill the damn ant. Yeah, but you got a lot of folks that are still, you know, they they don't know the definition of sickness. If it's not you, and you can't speak to me, then you, you know you don't matter. Even though you know, like you were mentioning, your body, your you know, the human body is a perfect example of the, the world. Pretend your body is the world that we're on. Inside of you, you have your heart. All right, well, that's America, you know, one country. And it has its own rules and shit that it has to follow. Now, it has to get along with the liver and the pancreas and all this kind of stuff. And if any one of them gets out of whack, old Russia, old liver over here, he's going to hop on old America. <laughs> you know, they're all systems that have to interact, and the Earth's no different. It's a huge system like your body, and in that system, you have us. Hey, and if we act up, it's going to kick our butts. 
Hey, Will, <laughs> another, I, I told you about the stand that I read in 2020. Another one I read was called Do Trees Communicate? And man, they have done extensive studies with trees. I'm talking about old world trees and such. So there are certain trees that, like, say, a beech forest. You you know, you in Europe, this is the guy that wrote the book was from Germany. He was a forester. And he talked about how, you know, um, that if a certain type of tree, the nut grew there <laughs> and uh, started trying to grow, then they'll send chemicals over to attack it. But now if it, it was a type of bush or a tree or something that had some kind of value to them, and it was struggling, then they would send extra chemicals to it. Or if one of their seedlings, better than one of their nuts, were in trouble, then they would all, they're all connected to this root system, sometimes using mushrooms, actually. And they, and they communicate by sending minerals or by not sending minerals. And, yeah. and it's like they have a consciousness. A tree has a consciousness, but not like you do, for sure. And the earth has one, too, or it because the damn tree connected to it. Yeah, it's just not the consciousness that, you know, people go, oh, well, this is a living entity that we should respect. I mean, hey, they don't respect each other now. So, you know, and that's getting off into that total separate thing. So, but <laughs> you're right. I mean, they do communicate. I mean, people, you know, they say, oh, that's just learned nature. Well, what do you think nature is? <laughs> I mean, how do you think we act as a culture? It's learned behavior. It's learned nature. You know, and when you have a big disruption of that, what happens to that? Well, that nature changes. Well, the nut lands in amongst all them others, and the nature of their area changes. So they go, well, we want to kill this son of a bitch, and they send out poisons. You know, the black walnut. You know, it, it's real thin to the ground because it puts out a natural pesticide in its root system uh, to kill anything else trying to grow near it. Yeah. Is that what fecal matter does, Tommy? Um, as far as I know, fecal matter does not have a conscience unless it's uh, unless it votes Republican. <laughs> <laughs> it, it doesn't have a what? <laughs> conscience? Oh, it doesn't have a conscience. Yeah. No. Oh well, no. Yeah. See, I figured that. I figured that'd be the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> because we know most of them folks up there that claim that label uh, don't have a conscience at all. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm always calling them. Look at that shit. <laughs> Look at that shit. <laughs> I got you. And, and how it's but now you know the thing of it is. Is 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 uh is 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 where you get your information, and I've learned that recently on uh, you know on other mediums of media that I own <laughs> is that you know you communicate with people and they there's a if they don't really believe what they're saying, they have convinced themselves that they do. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there I mean they, these people seem like that. I mean, there are actually people. I've had discussions with lately who really believe the Trump rhetoric that the election was stolen from him. All the proof from all these different lawsuits and all these different election officials saying, no, that's bullshit, that's bullshit. They go out and they throw out this one comment or this one word that's the truth, which may be like, today's Tuesday, and then the rest of it's a lie. And people go, yeah, they were telling the truth, it was Tuesday. And, and Trump was cheated. I mean, it just goes on and on. And there's so much misinformation right now. What I, I saw, this is the this is the total crazy irony of all of it. The person that that puts forth all of that stuff about the conspiracies and stuff put forth the comment that the media is the cause of all the problems in America, or something like that. And I thought to myself, they're thinking about mainstream media There's, that's what they're saying is that that's the problem and that, that the Fox News OAN and all these other extremely you know uh, Trump Trump part of the Republican Party are I mean it's like they're, 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 there's two different worlds there that people are not even communicating on the same level when it comes to that for sure 
I'm sure y'all don't want to get off into politics. Well, it's, no, I mean, it, it, I mean, it's, it's. I was trying to uh, unmute here. I'm sorry. Uh, no, I mean, the, the, you were talking about reading the books of the, um, you know, the Stand and you know, uh, the movie The Happening and stuff. You know, that kind of stuff. Well, you know, I read a lot of books and junk, and you know, I've read just tons of books that. The things we're seeing today, I have seen as plots, and I always thought they were just these rote, little, you know, cheesy kind of plots that are super entertaining to read, and it boils down to what's happening. You know, the guy, some guy that really don't need to be in power gets in power, and somehow the people that are doing okay get blindsided, and all of a sudden, and it's a, it's. It's a space opera. It's just on Earth. And it's, you know. I mean, look, at, look, read, look at history. Look at Napoleon. Look at Stalin. Look at, you know, Hitler. Look at well, really dumb people they put in the, in the power over the years that just got there by a fucking happenstance. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, a lot, yeah, a lot of those folks did. But, it, you know, a lot of our thing is, you know, and I've made this comment before, it's not... That where we are is not just all one party's problem. I mean, this is a problem of laziness and and yeah. uh, you know complacency of the voter people. I mean, because hey, that last election, I do not believe there was this just rampant crap like they're talking about. But that massive influx of voters just proves to me beyond a doubt that. Y'all, there has been a ton of you people been being lazy has got us to this point. And I, I'm in that group. I'm guilty as well. Tommy, but, do you vote? Do you vote, Tommy? Oh, sure. Every time you vote, like, on the local stuff, too? Oh, no. I, I don't always vote locally. I did recently because my neighbor was running. Now, what well, do y'all think? See, what do y'all What do y'all think about what we have going on in the state house in Arkansas? I mean, we none of us got out and voted, man. Guess what? What happened? You know, over the last several years, a very progressive state went to being very uh, different than that. Uh, Arkansas has been conservative for quite a while. I mean, at the probably, state house, so look here, Gore Gore took this county. You say a while. But I mean, in less than 20 years, it's changed. Well, yeah, oh, but now you're also got to look at the, you, you know, it, it's changing because of the rise of the new politics. That horrible space opera I was talking about. I mean, you know, we went from, you know, like you're talking about with Arkansas. Yeah, we were conservative state, you know, predominantly. Uh, but it was it was still what I would call the old Southern Democrat type thing. You're You're just a left wing Republican. You know, you got conservative views, Republican views, but you're a little bit on the Democrat leaning, you know, type thing. To Trump and Z crazy. I mean, and, and we, everybody we, used to love government cheese. Yeah, I know everybody loved that government cheese. <laughs> you know? Shoot, my grandmother was on that for a long time. That was good cheese. <laughs> you know? But I mean, it, it, it's just bad, you know, with the media, like you was referring to on your thing, a lot of folks, you know, they're saying, well, it's the media's problem. Well, where do you get your news? Oh, I get it from reliable sources. Well, what are those sources? Well, you narrow it down, and it's it, it, it's normally Facebook or one of these things, and it's like, okay, well, you're saying it's the media's fault because you can't believe anything they say. Well, you're getting all your news from one source, too. How about go to multiple sources? Not even big name brand sources. I mean, just go to accredited institutions that have professors that are really smart on both sides of it. And do some independent reading and make your own mind up. <laughs> That's not yeah. difficult. There is Google. <laughs> you know, how about yeah. just look up uh, debatable discussions between current politics and you know uh, past politics, and you'll get a ton of hits contrasting them. The COVID stuff, same thing. You'll get pros and cons on all of it. Just do a little research. My my suggestion would be to watch every channel. With me, I don't watch television, but I have have Fox News app on my phone. I have the MSNBC app. I have 
CNN. Now, CNN, I look at most. That's just where I'm at politically, okay? I mean, I'm just, to me, they, even though they may not be the most reliable, they are to me. Some people are not, but, I mean, that's just kind of my go-to. If I, I feel like if they're reporting it, I can believe it. But now that tells you I'm a little bit of a liberal, you know? So, but but I like CBS and in, I like CBS and NBC as well, you know. So that tells you that I'm even more of a liberal, probably. Well, but, I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, Go ahead, I'm sorry. And I listen to NPR. And hey. uh, so uh, I mean, I got I get that app on my on my phone. Of course, I mean, I'm you know highly educated dude that's probably not typical of Southeast Arkansas and you guys are, are variations on me and of course there's there's 30% of us or more that are that are Democrats I think it's like 36% of us that are Democrats or voted Democrats that is for Biden in this last county election so you know 30 30-35% of us in the county which is of, of uh, 20,000 what's that about uh, what 1200 people Mm-hmm. Well, you know, probably most of that. Uh, I guess, you know, to say that the, you're talking about the being liberal and the NPR and stuff, I mean, you know, I just don't have enough interest to listen to the enough of the talk show things. Um, you, you know, to hear a lot of that, to say, to be exposed to, quote, liberal ideas, to, could, to honestly be able to say if I'm a liberal or not. Because I haven't been exposed to the ideas that a lot of people... Now, I've been exposed to some that are, like, so extreme left. It's like, are you out your damn minds? You know? But well, there, are, people, there, could be, there could be more moderate, uh, you know, liberal things. And, now, you know, I'm saying this all on the liberal side of it. But, I'm, I, you know, I'm getting to the point of there's things I have not been exposed to on the liberal side. And there's things on the conservative side. So there are things that I don't know that go into consideration for a lot of votes and people and junk that do not affect me and that narrowness of mind of i'm only going to worry about what affects me i'm not worried about my kids i'm not worried about tomorrow i'm not worried about next month next year i'm worried about what affects me we have got away from that look we've got to we got to try to work about what affects everybody and there's just gonna be something yeah we got to together community wise you know instead of what affects me and you get too many of them lining up on i'm only worried about me and my self gratification right this second i don't know how they got there i mean some of them yeah but some of them i'm thinking man where did you get this (laughs) let's 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 talk about it because this is this is a very big topic i see the word socialism get thrown around a lot by people tommy do you see i mean what what, what do you think of when you let's just all talk about it but tell me you start with what do you think of when you think of socialism what do you what do you think people mean by that I like to think of it as everybody helping everybody else out so that 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 we we reduce suffering and lift the country up as a as a as a as a a group of bunch of different people, you know, I mean, socialism is democracy itself. I mean, it's, it's definitely education. I mean, so I mean, one example of socialism is is a public education. From what I understand, another example is the highway system. Uh, libraries are an example of socialism. I would suspect that uh, government employees is probably kind of a socialism thing. That is, people that work with the EPA and the, the OSHA, those sound probably like socialism. I mean, so, I mean, they're, I mean, you know, that's, you know, you talk to some people and they'll tell you all that, you know. Well, they'll let you know that they don't want anything to do with the government. They want to live on top of a mountain and you come near them and shoot them. But most people don't live like that. Most people I know that are pissed off at the government are pissed off because they're not getting a free check like someone else they think that doesn't deserve one is getting one. Well, you know, 
<laughs> if some of the folks on the socialism really knew what it was and wasn't just spouting it because they, they, they've heard it, I wouldn't have a big problem with it. I mean, I, I know, you know, to me, and, and you know, I could be off on my definition, but my understanding of a socialist is basically a socialist thing. It's Tommy tried to, I, I think Tommy was trying to say this when he said it's like democracy, was, you know, socialism is supposed to be, everything is provided for by the state or the government, and everybody gets a basic living strip in regardless of what they do, but the idea is, is because everybody is now equal, Everybody is going to end up having the same education, the same options, this and this and it, and I will all work equally together, have this nice harmony. Well, then, of course, you know, we know in reality you're going to have the folks that are like, I'm happy just making my little bit every month. I'm going to sit here and do this. You know, I understand that's the fault with it. Of course, democracy is where we kind of flip-flopped a little bit of that around and gave the power to the people instead of to the states and that kind of thing. Now that's my understanding, and I could be off. Now, what well, do y'all I, 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 I agree, with that. and of course, then I hear a lot of people say, "Well, you know, my problem is is that I've worked hard and I've contributed into this system, and I don't want you to blow all my nest egg on these immigrants that are coming in the border, blowing huh. all my money on them. Whenever then you're, you're in debt, twenty six trillion dollars. The government is. You're blowing my money on uh, immigrants coming in. Of course." You know, that's what those that's what some of the people are saying. To me, I'm like this. You know, we talked about depopulation, but I'm gonna tell you, I learned something a long time ago with working with companies is that if you're not growing your diet, that is if you don't have new people coming into the system, your population gets old and nobody's making any money. There's no innovation, there's no youth, there's no young, there's no next generation. And right. you gotta we got to sell that American dream to a new to a new group of people. We got plenty of room still. People act like the work work through growing, but I mean, you ain't growing, you're down, fella. Yeah, but I mean, the thing that's why I was saying is they don't really understand the thing of socialism, and that's why I mean I really would like to wish I had a definition truly in front of me. But and the reason I'm saying that is because if you follow the definition I've I mean, laid out, is everything by the everything is supplied by the state. That way, everybody's got an even level, da 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 da. You wouldn't be doing the spending my hard earned nest egg on the immigrants because the system is set up and it takes care of the people first. That's why okay. it's, you know, socialist republic or, you know, whatever. It's okay. the people first, everybody else second. Here's what it says right here a political or economic theory of social organization, that is the way you set up how people interact and what you do, which advocates the mean, that the means of production, distribution, and exchange should be owned or regulated by the community as a whole. Right. Well, I mean, see, I mean, you got that when you talk about you know, some of the community owned stuff. So you got examples of it, but if you're talking about how about a socialist government, I guess that would still apply by the same thing. Yeah, yeah, it's Everything it's, is. It, it keeps on. It says uh, uh, ownership means production and, and democratic control, such as workers' self management of enterprise. Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's what. I mean, that's what I'm saying, though, is, I mean, I, I don't want a socialist thing. I'm not advocating socialism, but that's what I mean. As folks holler, I don't want socialism, and they say it's because, well, I don't want you paying for them damn immigrants, and when they ought to be just saying, if you knew the real <laughs> definition of socialism, you wouldn't want socialism for the sake of not wanting socialism. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, it has nothing to do with what you're talking about, because most of what people are talking about is socialism is not socialism. I no. Mean, I'm going to tell you one of the biggest forms of socialism in the United States of America, and anybody that knows what the hell they're talking about knows that it's true, and it's, it's corporate socialism. But Oh, gosh. We think, we think it's good because it keeps money flowing. Yeah, I agree with you, but let's also give people the same access to that. If you want to give all these corporations money, hell, let's, let's all go on those spending beans. I mean, if they can spend money, let's all spend money. Give me a thousand dollars a month. Where's my? Oh, no. Where's my? Those are called. Uh, where's my government contract? You know. Oh uh, yes, yeah, those are, those are called subsidies. 
that, that, it's not called socialism. See, when it's done by the government and you don't want and the rich folks because they don't want people hollering socialism, they call it government subsidies. They, you know, it's just a different word for the exact same thing. You know, because that's what they're doing is they're giving you money. <laughs> that sounds fancy, right there, Phil. That sounds fancy. <laughs> But yeah, it's socialism in another name is all government subsidies are, you know, which is why the other folks are whining and complaining about it. But it's like, well, you're fine with it when it's for the rich folks, but you're not fine with it when it's for the poor folks. The corporate socialism, like you're talking about, because they don't <laughs> they don't hear about it when it's to the rich because that's they're they're happy. But you hear right. about it's good. it. When they're not getting money, you're going to hear about it. Right, yeah. yeah. I mean, yes, it's, you will. as I say, when it's the rich, it's called, well, we're receiving government subsidies to help keep the businesses afloat so we can keep the workers working. It's government subsidies. Whenever it's, I need the help to pay my rent and stuff because I've been stuck home and done a done into basic living stripping. Oh, no, that's socialism. <laughs> you know, even yeah. though it's still receiving free money from the government, it's just their definition of where it's going and why it's being used. Look, guys, everyone can't be like me and have multiple summer and winter homes. You guys, you got to have your expectations. And, and win three ninjas. Yeah. And win nope. three ninjas. I want a space yacht. Well, you can get one. Hell, they, they put one up the other day, and hell, nobody wanted it. They took it right back down. No, because <laughs> this, this, this goes to what I was saying a little bit ago. Could you, okay, let's, <laughs> let's get Brad Barfield. I know y'all put hot. Huh? Right, let's get Brad Barfield. Time to time. Yeah. Don Hensley. And let's go up here to Simmons Bank. Let's tell them we want to build a spaceship. Fucking A. Yeah. yeah. What are they going to tell us? What are they going to tell us? Versus well, I, what they're I, told. I, look, I have experience. They're probably going to go. <laughs> what they're probably going to do is, well, yes, sir. Please step in here, and, we, and our loan officer will be with you. They'll close, lock yeah. the door, call the rubber room people. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I, mean, hey. I mentioned them because they are a good base. They gave me a lot of credit, <laughs> you know, always. But you know, they. Hey. But but I I could go in there and get a thousand. <laughs> I can't go get a few billion. Yeah. No, no. You you missed the. Uh, I think you missed a little joke a minute ago. You thought I was laughing about us going to the bank, <laughs> but what, did you hear what it was? Tommy said he wanted the space yacht, and I said, "Well, hell, Tommy, they, they put one up the other day and took it right back down. Nobody wanted it. <laughs> right back down. No taking." <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I misunderstood. Mean, yeah. yeah. Apparently, no one what does. Damn, nobody wanted it. They took it right back down. <laughs> Actually, I bought it. Oh, that's why they took it down. <laughs> I got it. It's on the way. Amazon is shipping. Yeah. <laughs> what was that thing uh, anyway? Was that like a training activity? What the fuck was that anyway? Oh, yeah, it, why a, would you do it's that? It's a fifth test, but I don't, really don't know what the big deal was. It well, could see, have been something as simple as his birth, his son's birthday was that day, and he wanted to surprise his birthday. When you're a billionaire, you can do crazy shit like that. Well, you probably can, but I, I somehow really doubt it. <laughs> Yeah, from the engine, from, from an engineering standpoint, and I am not an engineer or nothing like that, but just you know, from a technical and a industrial guy, from the experience I got, I would call that one of those test runs, you know, where they got okay, you know, we're gonna get it to this point. We know we can do it. We got all the steps right. You know, we know we do this. This is how fast we traveled. And as they run into problems, oh well, this choker ain't long enough, or this bolt ain't right, or you know, those kind of things. They were able to do this test where, you know, without a whole bunch of other stuff in there, because, you know, once they actually mount it, there's a lot of stuff they got to do that can't ever be undone until it actually gets into space and blows apart. So, you know, you don't want to get it up there and be like the bridge built from two sides and you get in the middle. Well, boys, we're off about a half an inch up here. <laughs> you know? Bad time. 
Yeah. Yeah. Now, now that's what I think is why they did it. I got, know, I but I could it. be wrong. I'm, I'm yeah, gonna stretch your, I want to stretch both of your brains just a little bit more. And, yeah. And I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about I'm gonna put out the word Elon Musk, and then I'm gonna talk about the book by Ann Rand. And it's called Atlas Shrugged. Have you guys ever read that or know about that book? I have heard the name, but I've never read it or really even know what it's about. I don't know the book. I haven't read the book. I mean, it's, 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 it has more pages and finer print than The Stand. So, yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it's kind of one of those classics, almost kind of like, you know, Odyssey and a couple of other yeah. things, you know tell people to read it's you know it's literature they talk about get classes at college about it yeah you know because it, it is a pretty in-depth book but uh, you know again other than that's about the extent of it that i know well, about the book <laughs> I, I, I got i got i read about 600 pages into it and it was so fascinating because it was just the most humdrum stuff this and ran late but that was it was beautiful because what it was about the whole premise of the book is is about there are super it kind of very frigid Wilhelm Nietzschean and that there are certain supermen out there and that all these government people all these people that just they're everybody wants a little bite of what they have and that's what the government is is every all these millions of people out here that won't do a damn thing but sit around on their couch and eat skittles are just munching off the millionaires and billionaires the go-doers in this case the guy that built a certain I think he owned a railroad and it was a certain engine that he had built and he was trying to get approval for it and you know and, and then there was a certain phrase that everybody used about a, a certain name I can't think of it now but anyway it was a it, it talked about that because she was very you know a lot of people follow that and ran movement several years ago and those are the same people that went off into what's called the tea party and then they added in those were business class people the people that had time to sit around and read about economic things the people that owned companies and stuff small companies and a lot of those people kind of moved over from the tea party into the to the trump and group but that's an interesting book if you want to be the boredest you'll ever be i'm sorry and ran family but that's that's it's pretty boring reading for me but that, I know there's deep significance to a lot of people in that book. No thanks, yeah. man. No thanks. <laughs> but, uh, that's, that's, dude, I've heard too many crackpots quote that book as I know, just crazy. Jason for being retarded. <laughs> no thanks. Well, but I mean, that, you, even you know, as some an of them. Well, and that's what I mean. It, well, it's got to be one of them things of, you know, I wouldn't want to read it because I just don't care enough. Uh, yeah. But if you wanted to be, you know, if you were really into the political thing and you wanted to, hey, truly figure out both sides and, hey, you got to read the stuff that they read, even if you don't agree with it, to try to understand some of their stuff i mean you know to give you insights and especially if they say hey this is the basis of our thing well what in here made them believe this you know and no. so I, I but i couldn't do it you know so i, I, I can wanna, see it being a good thing for somebody that's a political student i don't want to read hitler's book for any reason no no but that's because you know we're not fascists we're not into the killing of the uh the jews and and uh, the fascists <laughs> but now, I, I have read I have read that book as well. Not 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 like that. And I was in college in liberal arts. I was a psychology major and a business major both. But in psychology and the social science we were actually assigned to read books like that. And of course I read at my comp I read the clip notes enough to understand what was going on with it. And other a lot of the other stuff as well. They put it in your brain. That's why a lot of people hate college because it makes you read about these other ideas. You know, you're well, like, don't, don't, don't get me wrong. There's there's understanding why why you're. I'm going to use the word adversary, but I don't know what else to use. There's 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 understanding why your your adversary thinks the way they do by understanding their information sources, and then there's absorbing. It. You know, like I watch, I, I click, I, 
I could see Fox News just enough to realize, just enough to know that, yeah, they're still fucking manipulating their viewers. You know? I can yeah, no, I, 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 yeah, I mean, you know, the, the, the living the book versus reading it and just uh, seeing a different point of view. And understanding where they're coming from because you understand what they're reading, like, like, like the like the books, Mein Kampf or, or Ayn Rand's, whatever. Yeah. Uh, there's understanding the concepts. Like I've tried to read right wing books before, and it is just complete fucking bullshit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, yeah, I agree. And I, wish, I, I mean, you know, and, and that's what I'm saying though is people like us. You know, like, Tommy, you wouldn't read it because you think it's, it's bullshit. You know, all right, well, and, and the, the thing, the reason I, you know, you said the thing about the Hitler, and I was getting to the, the, the thing of, you know, well, we wouldn't read it because of we we were Jews or fascists. We would read it because we would want to just find it interesting. I mean, you know, the the art of war. I, I ain't going to war or nothing, but I, find, I found it interesting. I haven't ever completed it, but... I just read it because it was cool. It applies to life. Well, yeah. this book doesn't apply to life, but it's a good guy to don't well, do that I, shit. <laughs> you know, there, there, there are worse things they can get in on us. Because most see the problem we had talked about Facebook. You know, of course, Facebook is a great resource, man. It's so great to keep up with friends and uh, you know just to. I mean, you know, it has its purposes. Okay, you can you can it, you could find good in it. But it's also, as liberal as Mark Zuckerberg goes out there and pretends to be, it is on his platform that most of the right, the lies, the misinformation that is circulated through the left and the right is came right through him. And of right, course, well, you know, people talk about yeah. whether to regulate that or not. I don't know. That's a big question. Yeah, because, I mean, you're getting into a lot of stuff that is not that, that you're you know, you you got to if you regulate one, you got to start regulating another. So, it's, eh. but I mean, the reason we read some of that, you know, is to exactly what Brad's saying now. To spot if some of the people had read some of those, they would be able to spot the tactics being used by Fox, O and N, Zuckerberg on Facebook. They would be able to spot these as y'all look. I mean this ain't right i mean let me go somewhere else but they in their minds they don't even they can't comprehend oh it's facebook they ain't lying to me i saw it on facebook <laughs> you know they don't comprehend this is just a way to pass propaganda whether it's good propaganda or bad propaganda it ain't always just the bad stuff too i mean they pass around stuff that's quote good but really you don't have a need for it <laughs> you know you get you see some of these diet kicks that all starts with propaganda I mean, people start marketing. posting it. And, yeah, they're marketing. Well, it's just in this case, they're marketing something we don't like, you know. But Tommy, it's still marketing. Tommy, y'all need, <laughs> to do, y'all need to do better marketing with yours, too, man. Your, your, your truck's too plain, man. Ooh, advertising. Yeah, yeah. man. Then they yeah. go, we, we, we pump shit. Vote Republicans. <laughs> <laughs> I totally thought about that. I thought about delivery for the Republican Party. No, don't yeah. don't do that. Make money off of it. Don't be a dumb fuck. Make money off of it. Put, That's put what I'm saying. It, it's because Donald the most. Trump. Go ahead, Donald. No, I'm no, no, to I'm go to bed, man. I gotta go to bed. It's my bedtime. I'm gonna let people ever sleep. Oh, oh yeah, man. no. No, we. I, no, I, man, I, we're, we're we're stoked up on sativa. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, didn't get a big so dose bad. of butter this morning, so. <laughs> I may be sleepy by tomorrow. Uh, I'll be sleepy here just a little bit. I know I yeah, will. Okay. <laughs> hey, man, I'm gonna tell you this though. It has been fun. Now, see, that was a fun. That was a fun ride, man. I appreciate yeah. you guys. Yeah, it's so much fun hanging out. All right, Tommy. What's up, All right. bud? Good night. Yeah.